Hey guys, I'm working on the SM420 swap for the GPW. Uh, if you followed my TDI four speed swap, this probably looks familiar. Uh, I have to bore out the bearing retainer hole to accept the larger one for the four speed. So um, I have a very small mill, but we'll take tiny cuts and check our measurements a lot. And we're gonna end up cutting back to where it's just real thin up here. Um, I did that on my other one and it worked, so um, I'll show you the process. It's super important that this stays uh, centered, indicated correctly, because that's what lines the uh, crankshaft and the input shaft of the transmission up. So this is a little setup I use to get a rough, kind of a rough center. These are machined to fit perfectly in here, so you can put your T90 bearing retainer in there, and then I have a just an aluminum piece of round stock and a collet that slips right into there. And so once you get that close, I mean, it's a fairly tight fit and it doesn't hit. So we'll pop everything apart, lock the table, then we'll put an indicator in here and double check it. Once that's good, we'll pop the indicator out and throw the boring head in. So this is the boring head that I use. Um, it's a little big for this machine, but if we go slow, I've used it before. So it's all about the cutter and the material. This is cast iron, very easy to cut, so we don't have a lot of force side to side. And this bell housing is solid all the way around. That really helps with the cut. The CJ2A and older ones have a little half moon cut out for... Um, all right, it's a little hard to see, and this is not really the right indicator for this uh, job, but it's going to get the job done. Um, I have a little bit of deflection, but I think a lot of that's probably just the dirt and the weird angle I'm at here. But what I do is I always start with like a north, south, east, west. So I, I, I zero it here, and I go back here and split the difference, and I come back, zero it again, and just do that back and forth, splitting the difference until there's none. And you'll only be able to get it close, uh, but not quite perfect until you get both axes done. So then I would do the east and west and uh, go from there. So it's going to be hard for me to show you. And that jumping around is me starting and stopping. But if you can see, it's still at zero there. So I'll zero it here. Well, actually, I'll check it there. So right in the front, basically a zero. Come around to the back. Kind of wiggle it in case it's on a piece of dirt. So we're a little below. So split the difference. And come back. I try to go in the same direction. And I'm going to zero this again. And go back. Okay. Split the difference. And if you find you're just chasing it, then do the, the left and right. So I'm about three thousandths off there. So go inch or one and a half thousandths. And everybody kind of has their different method. And you can see how it's jumping. It's not riding completely smooth on there. So this I should have, you can lube it up to a little scotch bright and a little oil to help clean that out. So I'll just keep doing that, zero it, and then uh, do the left and right. And then I'll come back and show you once we're done. All right, we'll start here, we're at zero. I'll we'll go 180 degrees, still at zero. And then we'll come another 90. Sorry, it's really hard to get the camera in here. Goodness, there we go. Still at zero. It's really hard for me to show you, I'm sorry. And over here, eh. 
we're off by a thousand. You're never gonna get it perfect, and the needle does jump, but that's pretty darn close. And it repeats. So I'm just turning it by hand, and we continue to get zero. And check it in a couple different spots. If it's within a thousandth for this particular application, that's fine. That's really good. So now we'll take that out, put our boring head in. You'll know how good you are. Um, we'll lock the table, we'll lock the head. And when I put the cutter on the boring bar, should be able to get it just before it touches and spin it around by hand and see a little scratch mark all the way around. Last tip, uh, when you lock your table, recheck it. So you kind of want a little tension on your locks um, as you're zeroing so that when you crank it, it doesn't push all the play to one side. So after you lock it, check it again just to make sure it went off or just to make sure it's not off. All right, we got it centered, made our first pass. Um, I knew we were pretty much dead on because before I cut, I put it right on the point and ran it all the way around by hand and it didn't touch, didn't touch, and I kept backing it out. So you don't move the uh, actual slide, the table, we're moving it at the boring head. I moved it out about one and a half thousandths and it started to contact all the way around. So that's plenty good. Plenty good enough for the women we hang out with. So now I got a lot of material to take off. We're gonna come out to where this is getting really thin right here. Um, don't worry, there's enough material, it'll be okay. Transmission will hold it together. So sneak up on your measurements, stop, take lots of measurements. Um, we will sneak this up through and take it in and out and uh, use it as like a go, no go gauge. Cause that's all that really matters is that this just slides up in there with no wiggle room. So I will use my um, you know, four inch micrometer here and an internal, um, I would think I have a big snap gauge we'll use in there. And just keep checking it and sneaking up on it. Take your time, if this takes all night, it's better than messing it up because if you go too much, the bell housing is junk. So just to give you an idea of how much we have to take off, it's not really a ton, but there you go. So that's about a quarter inch total. I'd say we have an eighth inch on both sides. So that's what we're shooting for. And then that will slide right in. And then we're almost done. All right, we're getting close. Um, tip, if you're using a bigger table than me, put that inside there first and then indicate it. I have enough room to sneak it up through there. Um, if you're going to use it as a test gauge, you know, you want to make sure it fits. It should be a pretty snug fit. Uh, obviously, measure as as you go. I locked this on that dimension just as a quick reference. So, we still have well, about a sixteenth on both sides left to cut. So, when we're done, it's going to be mighty close there. But that's the same way with the T18. So, and if you've ever worked with cast iron stuff it cuts easy but boy is it a mess it just comes off like dust so look at, i mean i'm just my face I'm, I'm dirty so and it throws it at you but it stays cool and it doesn't really need lube i'm just using high speed steel and i'm coming out 20 thousandths each cut and it likes to feed so i'm just running it right through not worried about surface finish until i get to the last couple cuts so i'm just hogging off material <laughs> 20,000s at a time. Small machine, but I'm not having to pay anybody to do it, so I'm happy with that. All right, a couple more passes and we'll be there. Now that I'm real close, I'm going down to 5,000s for this cut, and then I'm gonna check it. If you go in really small increments, um, even if you do over cut, it can't be too much. So I'm gonna try and record this cut. It's gonna be a little shaky, but let's do it.
close now. Oh, got this in the way. Oh, almost. So now I'll take a couple more exact measurements and get a, a number of how much I need to cut because my little quick test gauge is pretty much right there so it looks like we still got about 20 thousandths more but i'm taking my time because if i mess up here i gotta do it all over again so stay tuned all right everybody it's done all that hard work paid off the fit is perfect nice and snug all right, guys, here it is from the other side. Um, I'm super pleased with the fit. Try to get it in there just right. There we go. Took me a while. Let's see it falls right through. But uh, it was worth it because there's no wiggle room in there. You don't want any clank. If it clanks one way or another, it's too much. So when you have it perfectly square, it goes right in. That's exactly how you want it. So, next step, drill and mount. All right, it's done and it fits quite well. So I can't really take a picture and hold it on there, um, but I'll show you tomorrow. So these three holes line up with the stock holes. So all I have to do is kind of just bore them out uh, so the threads are gone, so these slide in. And then this one is inboard a little bit. You can see where the stock T90 hole is. So we just gotta come in and uh, just drill that one. The threads are in there. Then it bolts up and uses the stock shift fork and throw out bearing. And then this side's done. It's ready to go right in to the L134. This fits a GM nine and a quarter inch clutch. I think, clutch disc, and then we're using a CJ5 uh, pressure plate and CJ5 flywheel and starter. So once it's all together, I gotta clean this off and uh, then we should be good to go. So. so I was able to use three of the transmission mounting holes, but one of them was off over here so they had already drilled and tapped the case. So if you have a situation like that and you need to mark it, I take some spray paint, hog it up on there, let it dry a little bit, and then press your part up against it. It's indicated by this hole, so these aren't super critical, but you can see how good of a hole um, that shows you to help indicate and mark where that was. So then you can center punch it and drill it out. 